committee has met. With respect to the horrendous invasion of the town by the exiles during the Lincoln Day celebration, and there is some concern as to what action you intend to take. There seems little to be done. Well, they broke the curfew, violated the terms of their exile. They are back in the camp. Well, the committee wants to know what action you intend to take. Without the cooperation of the local officials, we are helpless to act. Unless there's a clear threat to the community. It's clearly a... It, the committee feels that uh, it's a very real danger to the community. Who knows when they might decide to violate the curfew again. We are afraid that a bad example has been set, not only for the exiles, but for certain elements in the town. If you allow all controls to slip, what... Well, who knows what might happen. I might agree with you, but I'm helpless to act. You... you... Somebody better tell your superiors there's a problem here. Uh, and in our next report to the Area Advisory Committee, we're gonna have to discuss accountability. Accountability. VIP treatment for someone who's only been nominated for an office that doesn't yet exist. And where are the other nominees? Obviously not coming, which should lead you to some inescapable conclusions. Doesn't mean I understand it. Nice going. You almost led him right to us. Yeah, lucky it was a border guard. They got an attention span of about five minutes. Otherwise...
Ladies and gentlemen, in Russia, where as most of you know I come from, we have a saying. Actually, we have a saying for practically everything. It is, of course, untranslatable, but it is uh, something like this. Make of an adversary a friend, and together you will plant a field. Make of him a slave, and you cannot bury him enough times. Unfortunately, we do not always follow our old sayings. However, here we would like to speed the steps for us to return to our own country, leaving behind us friends. Tonight we have a man who will help us to do that more quickly. I would like to propose a toast to the first Governor General, Governor General of the Central Administrative Area, Mr. Peter Bradford. Cheers. 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 What happened to the election? The other candidates? They lost. Just like that? Just like that. The results of the referendum will be announced on the national network following your speech to the joint session of Congress. What if I don't want to be appointed? Someone else will be. The result is the same to us. The difference is between you and your people. 1932, Hennessy. I'm afraid it'll be a little lost on me. A man of simple tastes. I'm afraid to say I'm a man of complex tastes. <clears throat> I'd never really be any good at being one of the proletariat I serve. You think of yourself as ordinary, and yet you command the respect. People trust you. Maybe that's because I'm not that far ahead of them. Do you realize this brandy was put down just as Hitler was rising to power in Germany? Anything older than me, I kind of lose interest. Very American. You're not intrigued by the gyrations of history? A capitalist and a communist drinking a brandy from the time of fascism's greatest power. Think of it. At this very time, that other great fascist, Stalin, was under the guise of socialism, murdering millions and imprisoning millions more. I'm partial to this year. It is the year my grandfather died in the Gulag. I'm sorry. I don't know what to say. My grandfather is now a hero of the Soviet Union, posthumously bestowed. Stalin dead and discredited, my grandfather dead and recredited. And his grandson, one of the few responsible for the elevation of Mother Russia to the only true power in the world. We learn how to survive. You will too. Ever completely trust a man who will not get drunk with you? The irony is, of course, that my grandfather, posthumously rewarded, died suffering and disgraced, filled with hate and hopelessness, alone. Just he in the hard, frozen ground of Siberia. I've a crown up in the kingdom, get that good news. I've got a crown up in the kingdom, ain't that good news? I'm gonna lay down this world, gonna shoulder up my cross, gonna take it home to my Jesus, ain't that good news?
Pit stop. so different after all. It may surprise you, but in many ways, Russians can be fiercely independent. But our system, 75 years of socialism, has produced the people who wish to be led, who wish the government to tell them what is right and what is wrong. They rely on the government to keep in check their baser instincts, their, their selfishness, their greed, so they no longer have to make those judgments themselves. Oh, they still have those base instincts, but they come out in destructive ways. Like the behavior of the repressed children. Isn't it funny? For you, it is the bad behavior of spoiled children. For us, the bad behavior of repressed children. The thing about spoiled children is they never know they're spoiled. Until it is too late. For us, just the simple fact that if we could neutralize America and take our proper place in the world, the communist man would emerge. So, now we control most of the world and we don't have enough competent people to run it. We're failing because our system has produced the people who don't understand the idea of choice. They can't make an independent decision. Always, everything must be, must be checked to the next level and then the next, until finally it's safely within the government. You know, the only virtue we still have as a people is a kind of madness, of a frenzy for a living life. We love passionately. We love those we're close to irrationally. We love our country. Not the USSR, but, but Russia, our homeland. And, uh, of course, this has been very effective in keeping people in line, whether under the Tsar or the Politburo. How did you win? <sighs> in some ways, it's more than you had. You had political freedom, but you lost your passion. You'd become embarrassed of passion, of feeling strongly about anything. You never took an interest in the rest of the world, in understanding the rest of the world. You always saw things through your own vision. You wanted things to be right, by which you meant moral and democratic and your own way. So, when you found yourself the most powerful country in the world. The only clear policy you could agree on was being anti-communist and with such, a, with such a simplistic viewpoint. You began to miss the point of a lot of what was going on in the world. People who looked to America as an example for their own aspirations found themselves opposed by you because 
because we supported them. One of the ways we were able to usurp the United Nations was because when the nations of the world, rightly or wrongly, began to perceive you as the problem, you gave up. You took your ball and you went home. When there was a conflict in the world, you either reacted as a strong man bending backwards for fear of offending someone or suddenly thrashing about wildly in some futile and foolish attempt to prove you are not weak. So ultimately, you found yourselves alone. Feared, envied, hated. How could we not win? What lure would be enough for you to betray your country? If you ask, I will tell you honestly, this once. My first posting was to England. Well, England was England. But then I was posted to America to San Francisco. And I thought, what a wonderful country. What a wonderful test of myself. If I could find myself in the currentless water, maybe I could discover my soul. Not my Russian soul, but my soul as an individual. Maybe if things had been different. Maybe you took the lure after all. You think that's what this is? No. America has lost. And I have lost. identification number. How long? How long? You got family in Chicago? My children. I'm gonna... You gonna what? You gonna see them? Join them? Kidnap them? What? Hey, stop being mean. I'll start with seeing them. Look, I appreciate the help. You would just point me in the right direction. You uh, haven't finished your soup. Some of us get real put off when people don't finish our soup. Please. You're on the Underground Railroad. One of the oldest railroads in America. Same place as slaves use when they were escaping the South. It goes everywhere all direction. People started running, and the railroad got resurrected. The Lord works in mysterious ways. What he's trying to say is that we can get you to Chicago a whole lot faster and safer than you can get there on your own, if at all. I'd appreciate that. Devin Milford. I've just been sitting here trying to figure why you look so familiar. I'm sorry, it's a mistake people make sometimes. It's too bad. Because I'd sure like to shake that man's hand someday. What a 
If I were to tell you that I know somebody in Chicago who could find Devin Milford's kids for him, now would that interest you at all? <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm Melanie Blackstone, and this is my husband, the Reverend James Blackstone. <laughs> I'm Clayton Colton. You into something. You must be doing something. Whatever it is, count us in. Bet you got a lot of people ready, you know? No. I just need to see my children. Well, then, we'll just have to see what we can do about that and let the good Lord take care of the rest. You haven't told him that I'm to be his deputy. Not yet. I print. Soon our ability to help you will be limited. You'll have to survive on your own. I wonder if we shouldn't show a little bit more concern for Mr. Brantford. Well, it's nice to have your respect, Andre. I wouldn't bet against her, Andre. She is a woman who loves a combat. Too dangerous for me. Well, aren't we fortunate we all want the same thing? Yes. Power. The power to make a better world. Yes, a better world. Power is like six. We surround our last bit of vocabulary of love, but at the end. Maybe it is simply last after all. You didn't tell me about this little detail. It is nothing. I think Marion has her own agenda. I don't trust her. And we do not trust you. To be precise, the Soviet Union, General Samanov, doesn't trust that you are the right man for the job. You are not a party man. To them, that means you are uncontrollable and thus untrustworthy. Marion, on the other hand, is committed to her ideology and to her own power. Two quite trustworthy qualities. They see you as not having enough at stake. I have my country at stake. Well, I have persuaded General Samanov, and he, in turn, partially against his better judgment, has persuaded the Kremlin that you are the right man. But he needs some guarantee. What if I don't do it? Someone else will. Someone less capable, less convinced. I set your timetable back. And that would be dangerous for your hope for America and for mine. And what is your hope for America? To salvage as much as possible. allocation for the people here. Low wages, but kind of the ultimate company town deal. Any of them come back? It's too early to say. They make it sound good the way they present it. Something to do with your skills. They've given up. Exiles have broken out of the camp and demonstrated in the Lincoln Day Parade in violation of restricted areas, curfew, and engaging in unlawful political activity inciting to riot. What is the status? There is rampant insubordination. They are defiant. And if the situation is permitted to continue, we will lose control, not just of the exiles, but the entire area. The authority of the unit. 
must be maintained. I wish to conduct a disciplinary reprisal against the camp. Colonel Denisov will not authorize an action like that. Something has to be done. You are authorized, under your standing orders, to take whatever measures you deem necessary to prevent the rebellion. You are suggesting I do what is necessary to stop this insurrection. You must do whatever you feel is necessary under your basic responsibilities. Yes, sir. Official notification that the United Nations Special Service Unit will be conducting maneuvers in and around the town of Milford, commencing at 0700 on the 28th. Well, is there something you want me to do? Sure, you don't need my permission. You will issue an advisory to townspeople to stay indoors and off the streets and roads. Terrific. He had no choice. I suppose when one becomes president, one has a tendency to justify a predecessor, a way of ensuring whoever follows some tolerance of your decisions, right or wrong. He saved a nuclear holocaust. In my opinion, the way he handled the transition of power, he saved thousands of lives, maybe millions, in what would have been futile resistance. How can anyone know that? How could he have not given us a chance? You had a chance. I had a chance. We all had chances. Have you ever been to the Middle East, Mr. Bradford? No. For hundreds of years, the ordinary person, the trader, the person trying to survive, has learned not to approach his problems directly, but assemble. Seem to support one thing, and next, the exact opposite because that was the means of survival in the place that fate had them placed in. They were born, make love, have children, are well off or poor, and die, much in the same way as free men. Next comes freedom is within each of us. You know why it is. This is not an issue of freedom, but survival. I know you don't like me. You see me as a stooge, a collaborator. I'm not a party member. I sit on a national advisory committee, equivalent to the central committee in the Soviet Union, but I do not vote. I, I have no power. A figurehead only. The only real effect I can have is to create the impression that things aren't as bad as they are. To give our people time. The opportunity to survive. I guess I just never realized I'd gone so far. We 
had lost so much control. Totalitarianism doesn't need armies. It only needs to control a couple of things. The media and the ability to dispense privilege to some and withhold it from others. And of course, a weak and divided people helps. I don't think I can do it. It's a little late for second thoughts. I had some illusion I could help bring it back. I believe you can do something. Something finally good for the people of your area. Possibly for everyone. But it will require a lot of compromise. You may even learn to be a Middle Eastern trader. state of Indiana. industrial area recently? Not recently. You're in for a treat. Used to be America's muscle. Steel, aluminum, autos, rubber. Now most everything's closed down. They wanted a country which didn't have a productive capacity. I guess we're well on our way to giving it up before they get here. from the cities mostly which are dying plans are all but down some of them are limping along they're allowed out for most of them this is it they'll never get permission to cross they'll just hang around so they'll drift back to wherever it was they came from American refugees yeah it's almost like a contradiction in terms isn't it Mr. Milford, you're awake. He's in an 80% physical block. My name is Helen Justin. I'm your doctor, or at least one of them. You had a scary time. You were blown up, nearly killed yourself. Come on. Is anything? No. Everything's intact. You won't be hobbling around on anything artificial. Not for some time, I'm afraid. How soon you get out depends on how well you do with treatment. 
There's no restraints. We have a little rule here. If you make it out the door, you're free. You seem to have a lot of very angry and unhelpful feelings. Let me explain what we're going to try to accomplish here. That's to save you the time and effort of trying to fight the treatment. There have been so many bad things which created your antisocial behavior. We're going to help you forget those things. I think you'll find when you realize it's inevitable, things will go a lot smoother for you and be more comfortable. Just rest. Put yourself in our hands. You'll be fine. Better, in fact, than you thought possible. I didn't go with them. Well, I don't think either of you were ready. You don't know, Mom. You have Daddy. I had a choice once. But he was scary. Very scary. Too scary. Because you know he'll come back. If he can. And if he does come back, if you still love him enough, Dearest Amanda, I'm writing to you now because I can't reach you, talk to you. It's become second nature to me to have you part of everything I felt or did, decisions I made. Everything has moved so fast since I got here. It's as though I'm suddenly so far from Milford that it's already a part of my past. Maybe I should tell you about the president. What a sad man. But somehow there's something noble in the humiliation he has carried for us all. Maybe that's a greater service than leading an army into battle. Who knows? 
I wonder about myself. The choices I suddenly have. What if they're the wrong ones? What struck me is that I'm about to become a part of a system which some future generation is going to rebel against. I'll be hated by people I don't even know, who don't understand why something was done. Just as all the kids growing up now don't have any idea of the difference between the symbol of Abraham Lincoln and what he actually stood for. You can't look at those eyes and not think of what being an American has meant. Now there's an end to it. Soon there will be no America. It will be history. Quickly lost and distorted like Mr. Lincoln himself. I don't know. I think of Jackie and Scott. We wanted to protect them. Maybe we were trying not to infect them with our ideas which seem to have gone so wrong. I suppose there will have to be new revolutions with new generations who will have to discover the values which our forefathers handed down to us. If those truths stop being real, maybe it's better to let them go. Let some new generation discover us, though, for the first time. Maybe freedom it's just one of those things you can't inherit.
Having passed the resolution unanimously and directing that said resolution will be presented to the several states pursuant to their ratification, the chair would like to invite the members to welcome before this body the man who has been chosen by the people of the central administrative area to be the first governor general of a regional joining of states, Mr. Peter Bradford.
Speaker. Mr. President. Mr. Vice President. Members of Congress. I come before you today with a great sense of humility. Never expected to be here. Like most Americans, the course of my life has not been what I expected it to be. But I wonder if George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, could have imagined the changes in our country just 30 years after their lifetimes. I wonder at the amazement of Abraham Lincoln if he were to have seen the changes in the 19th century Yet with all the changes, remained our country and survived. Today we are facing changes which some of us find abhorrent, others hopeful. Some see it as the end, others as a beginning. I come from a part of the country where in many ways life is simple, predictable, reliable. In the spring, when the ground is thawed, we plant a seed. And in the summer, it grows to maturity and is harvested. And when we plant again, it's not the same stock of corn or grain which we saw standing beautiful in the field last summer. But the seed is the same. And given our time, our effort, good fortune, a new crop will emerge which can feed hungry people. The seed is in the ground. It is the history and experience of 200 years. I promise you I will give it my faith and my life with the help of the people of my area, the heartland of this country. We will see a bountiful harvest. Talk to Dad first. I trust the two of you'll stay here till I get back. And don't worry about me, okay? I'll be all right. I hate to ask a 16-year-old to kiss his mother. Grab this one. I'd better stay with the kids. They're all scared to death. We'll be back as soon as we can. Mom, why don't you... 
I mean, they said we should stay inside all day. Ward said we shouldn't violate the curfew. The hell with the curfew. Nobody's going to tell me to sit around all day in my own house. Dad, they're squatters. Damn it if I don't guess they are. Got something there for me to carry? On your call to Milford, sir. Yes. There seems to be some problem. What? Lines down. Was something wrong? There is no indication. It's very common. 